Hey, welcome to the Sunday preview for this first Sunday in February. And uh, it's three weeks now we've been on the first chapter of St. Mark. So it's a pretty important chapter. Today we have verses 29 to 39. And it says, On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him. And on finding him, they said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose I have come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, more demons, more cures of sick people. It seems like after Jesus last week had um, expelled that demon in the synagogue of Capernaum, he goes uh, over to Peter's house, he cures the mother-in-law, but then they start bringing all sorts of people, including many who were possessed by demons. It's a curious thing. They seem to have plenty of them back then. Um, It seems like the devil really had a large control over people. Maybe today it's more subtle, but it's probably the same thing. And what is true is that it's only Jesus that can truly heal the sick and expel that evil that's inside of us whether it's demonic possession or it's the evil of sin jesus is the only answer he's the only one who has the word who can expel the demon and even a little town like capernaum had plenty of it and all the places we live in too we never completely escape that influence of the evil around us but we never stop longing for freedom from it either. So Jesus is the only answer there. What catches me about this though, is that early in the morning, Jesus went off to a deserted place to pray. He wasn't just an activist trying to do all good that he could and and be some kind of social worker or a man with healing powers that he could become popular. What was most important for Jesus was to get away and be alone with his heavenly father. You know, whole tomes have been written on this. What does it mean for Jesus to be praying to the father? But the gospel is clear that he had a great need to be alone with God. Maybe that's where the Holy Spirit spoke to him and inspired him and told him what's the next step. You know? And that's where he discerned what he ought to do next. So it seems like when the disciples finally found him, they said, everyone's looking for you. And the word must have gotten out that there were plenty more people to be healed, probably more possessed people. But after that night of prayer, Jesus discerned that God the Father wanted him to move on to other villages to spread the word of God to heal more people in other places. And it was that prayer that made Jesus obedient. Any of us probably would have stayed there and say, okay, you know, I'm gonna ride this wave. I'll do all the good that I can here. Jesus had to say no and move on because it was the will of his Father. I think the lesson for us is if we're really people of prayer, we'll be discerning very well what God wants us to do. And that's the only thing that matters, to do the will of God out of love. So let's be people of prayer so we know what God really wants of us.